Hello people of YouTube, it's Deephag here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.2 and 2.8.3. Uh, 2.8.3 has just landed in the Open Beta channel with a new feature called multi-threading. This is supposed to improve performance, and so I thought I would do a quick test comparing 2.8.2 and 2.8.3, both in single-threaded and multi-threaded modes. It's not massively scientific, I have to say, but uh, I thought it'd be quite fun to get some, some data out there that we can uh, actually make use of and compare. And the results are interesting. Uh, let's, uh, let's start off with this uh, video that I've got here, which is uh, recorded in 2.8.2, single-threaded. Now, um, my, my setup for doing these comparisons is I've got the, the debug information showing up at the top of the screen. You can display that by pressing right control and pause. Uh, the first time you press it, you get the FPS counter. The second time you press it, you get the full stats. Uh, I have this, this track file that I recorded, and I then played it back in replay mode in 2.8.2, which of, of course is single-threaded. Uh, I played it in 2.8.3, single-threaded, and I played it in 2.8.3 multi-threaded. Uh, all of this is in 2D. I've not done uh, any comparisons in VR. Uh, I've played around with VR, but the results are, for me at least, a little bit baffling, and so I'm going to have to come back to those later. So for now, we're just testing 2D. So in 2.8.2 in uh, single-threaded, as you can see here, we're sitting pretty much at 65, 66 frames per second when we're on the ground. Uh, this is eff effectively our benchmark. Uh, when I'm in the map view, the F10 map view, which you'll, you'll see a little bit later, it maxes out right up at 180 frames per second. Uh, when we're looking at the air, uh, you know, like there's an aircraft I've got kind of uh, circling overhead. Depending on how much of the ground is visible at any given time, frame rate is bouncing between 85 and 100 frames per second and uh, the absolute maximum frame rate that I ever see in 2.8.2 is 180. I'm assuming there's like a frame limit there, like a frame rate cap or something. So this uh, this track file is um, just very, very simple. There's this section here where we sit on the ground and we watch uh, an OV-10 Bronco with an Apache next to it starting up. Uh, once the Apache starts up, we're going to display the F-10 map and that's when you'll see the, the frame rate bounce all the way up to that frame rate cap. And then we do a little bit of uh, kind of airborne stuff. Uh, and then we uh, we basically finish. So I'm, I'm going to bounce this forwards a little bit. I'm guessing we missed a bit. We're, we're on the F10 map, so let's uh, see if we can find that. Here we go. So here, here you see it bounces all the way up to basically the limit. And now I'm in the airborne section, and like I said, in this section we're seeing between 85... Uh, actually, I, I wrote down between 85 and 100 frames, but I saw it bounce all the way up to about 110 there. So, um, you know, like I said, this is not massively scientific. This is me reading numbers off the screen as quick as I can uh, in order to get some figures. So anyway, l l let's consider this our, our baseline. Uh, we, we managed to get 66 frames a second on the ground, uh, and in the air it was between 85 and a little bit over 100. So, this is 2.8.2. Let's jump on to the next video. In the next video, it's 2.8.3, and we're in single thread. Now, the reason I did this is because I suspected that um, some optimizations have already been made uh, in 2.8.3, even if you don't take into account the multi-thread. So, I wanted to see what you get. Uh, so, sitting here on the ground, uh, we're actually sitting between 67 and 68 frames a second, so just sitting on the ground with this exact same replay file, we've got one or two extra frames per second without even engaging multi-threading. So I think that's an interesting thing to note. If I jump this forwards again, let's see if we can get to where we jump into the F10 map, because in the F10 map that's when you're effectively going to smack into the, uh, the frame rate limit. And I wrote down here that I got 183 frames per second. Um, now, I was assuming there was a 180 frames per second uh, limit, but uh, apparently there is not. Yeah, there you go. So we actually slightly breached that 180 there. And in here, when we're in the airborne section, I was writing down that I saw between 90 and 110. Although actually, again, 
I'm clearly not being massively accurate because they almost jumped up to 120 there. Um, so, so yeah, Let, let's say between 90 and 120 we're seeing in the airborne section. So very, very high frame rates here uh, in the multi-threaded mode. Uh, and the, the highest frame rate that I saw, again, this is just me kind of doing this visually, I saw 186 frames per second. So uh, not too shabby, I would say. Uh, so this is this single threading performance is already quite a big increase over 2.8.2 but now let's turn on multi-threading uh, and actually let me pause this video momentarily here uh, one thing to note is now uh, in the frame rate counter it also tells us uh, whether we're cpu or gpu bound uh, and when we're gpu bound it gives us a theoretical uh, frame rate that we could achieve if we were not GPU bound. When it's CPU bound, it tells you which thread is actually uh, maxing out, which I think is pretty good. Uh, it's a nice bit of extra debug information you're getting there. So uh, here in 2.8.3 multi-threading, uh, on the ground uh, I was seeing up to about 118 frames per second. Keep in mind this is up from the 66 that we had with this exact same scene uh, in 2.8.2. So of course an absolutely massive increase. We're almost seeing uh, a, a doubling of the frame rate uh, with the exact same settings. Uh, and I'll show you the settings after this video clip. Uh, so let's uh, let's jump this forwards a little bit. Once again, we want to see that F10 view, uh, and in F10 view, I was seeing 180 frames, uh, and it was actually it it felt like there was a hard limit there. It was hitting 180 and just staying there, uh, and I think at that point we were CPU bound. Here on the ground, we're GPU ground. It seems to be the more geometry you have in view, and of course, most of the geometry is the ground, uh, that's going to max out your GPU. Once you're up in the air uh, and you're seeing a lot less of the ground, uh, then it is the CPU that is tending to be the limiting factor, at least in my setup. Uh, that, that's the case. Here we go, F10, yeah, 180 and CPU bound rendering thread. And actually, when we're in the air, we're still CPU bound. And when we're in the air, I was seeing it bounce between 110 and 180 frames, depending upon how much of the ground is in view. You can see here, when we're at high altitude like this, it's pretty much pegged at 180, uh, which is kind of incredible. Uh, I was only seeing the lower uh, airborne frame rates for this sequence with the Apache, when I had the Apache flying at low level. Uh, and circling around. So uh, the Apache is down at kind of 110 frames and up, and then at high altitude it's just pegged at 180 all the time, uh, which is very, very impressive. And for this sequence, uh, in 2.8.3 with multi-threading, the highest uh, frame rate that I saw was 180 frames per second. So uh, not too shabby, in my opinion. I think this is a, a pretty good result. Um, multi-threading, at least with my machine, is showing an absolutely massive uh, improvement. And, and I'll, I'll share the specification of my machine uh, in the, the show notes below uh, so that you can see exactly what we're talking about here. And if I stop this and I jump to my settings, I took a quick uh, screen grab of the actual graphic settings that I'm using. Uh, fairly high settings for most things, as you can see. Uh, this may or may not even be um, optimal. Uh, you can see I've got VSync turned off as well, uh, which uh, you know most people would probably have that on. Uh, and I'm I'm using the SSAA. Uh, I'm not massively convinced how good that actually is, but I'm I'm trying to use it just to get very very smooth results. So uh, th th those are all of the test results in in 2.8.2 uh, and 2.8.3. Uh, let me know in the in the comments below how you guys get on with all of that. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how this develops. I think multi-threading is going to be a massive improvement uh, for for the game you know, with with regards to performance. Um, like I said, I got weird results in VR. Uh, my my VR performance uh, has actually always looked bad if you just take the the fps and actually i've just rebuilt my computer and i noted that between my old setup and my new setup i got basically no difference in frame rate um so there's there's clearly a limiting factor there or also i'm not entirely sure whether or not the frame rate that is reported when you're in vr is actually genuinely the frame rate because i would assume that in vr there are a bunch of fake frames being generated by the uh, the drivers for the headset um, in order to 
give you a, a smooth experience. But in, in VR, I'm tending to get about 35 frames per second. Uh, and my experience was that didn't change between 2.8.2 and 2.8.3. And it also didn't seem to change between single-threaded and multi-threaded. Uh, when I'm in VR, I'm CPU-bound always. It always just says CPU bound rendering thread. When I'm in the main menus, it seems to peg at about 60 frames per second, but when I'm actually in game, it bounces around between kind of 30, 35 frames per second. So of course, massively lower than what we have in 2D. But that's kind of always been the case. So I wonder if there is still some optimization to be done there. Because um, of course, the VR frame rate should be much lower. Uh, you know, VR is very, very taxing on a machine, but. Um, I don't feel like it should be this low. I think something is not quite right here. But um, anyway, who knows? Who knows? Um, so yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. That's a really big help to me and to the channel. Uh, you also have the option of joining Deep Hacks Ground Crew uh, for a small monthly fee. You can help to support the channel and, and support me making these videos. There's a join link below. Big shout out to all of those who have already uh, joined Deep Hacks Ground Crew. Thank you very much, Harish Rajan. Leo Netzel, Byron Farrow, Storm Kimbari, Channel Wright, Mangash, J.R. Walker, Chandler Hedgewald, Griff Nizzle, Mr. Yeti, Frantic Stone, Bread, Tier Zero, Erdink Ertan, uh, Veli Tapani Korpikanas, Tiger Moto, and Pink Floyd. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time.